Welcome to the first look at the Furious Wild, the first expansion pack for Total War 3 Kingdoms. The Furious Wild adds the Nanman region to the map and the tribal people that inhabit the area. The Southern factions bring with them unique units and gameplay mechanics sure to bring out the chieftain in any Total War commander. The Southern tribes watch as the Han Empire crumbles in onto itself. Warlords rising, wanting to rule China for their own gains. They are not fit to rule the jungles, only the Nan Man are. But divided, they stand no chance against the warlord's might. Lady Jurong, descendant of the Fire God, has left the confines of her commune and seeks territorial expansion. If she can unite the 19 tribes, then she will truly be the queen of the Nan Man. To unite the south against the Han, we will need to conquer all 19 tribes that inhabit this region. It won't be easy, but Lady Jurong has the burning passion of her followers to aid her in this quest. Starting off, we will need to take out the Yunnan tribes to gain greater access the into the region. Let's take a look at some of the unique units that will bring about our victory. The first is the Followers of the Flame. They carry burning maces which deal both fire and splash damage, turning their enemies into ash. Here we have the first look at a new unit type, the Animal Handlers. These Tiger Slingers not only have ranged attacks, but also fight alongside their trained Tigers, which can charge into battle, dealing great damage and morale penalties due to their high charge damage and scare traits. After claiming the victory, we are given several options of how to deal with this settlement. Since this is the final settlement of the Yunnan tribes, we are given special options which would secure their fealty. A normal occupation would give us their settlement and fealty, but that comes with a major penalty to our faction support. If we were to vassalize them, they would pay tribute to us and join us in our future hostilities with their own armies. But what I'm going to do today is confederate them into our own faction. Not only do we get their fealty, but we will also get access to the characters that were in their court. We'll be using this later to gain access to some great generals. Confederating with the Yunnan tribes has revealed to us the surrounding area, which is inhabited by our rivals. Or are they potential allies? Ahunan have long been a thorn in our side and the time has come to crush them. Meng Wu, on the other hand, has shown a desire to absorb their lands into his own realm. We will have to move quickly if we want to grab it for ourselves. There can only be one ruler of the Nan Man after all. Finishing off our first turn, we get to pick our first reform. The Nan Man factions have access to a unique reform tree with three unique branches. The economy branch improves our production, increasing the income from our peasantry and industry. The military branch will give powerful bonuses to our fighting capabilities, improving our replenishment and even giving access to Han tactics. The political branch will change the way we deal with other factions, improving our trade and even giving options to make deals with those who don't dwell in the jungles. Each branch also features mutually exclusive reforms which at the end will grant bonuses depending on which choices you make. Take these bonuses into account when you're making your decisions. For now, we'll pick Elephant Taming, which will give us access to an elephant mount for one of our generals. Elephants have great mass, which makes them ideal chargers, but come with some drawbacks. Mounting an elephant will disable the character's abilities, dueling, and even dismounting during battle. To make up for it, generals who ride elephants can gain access to unique abilities that are only available to those who ride the great beasts, like the ability Gore, which does a huge amount of damage in an area. Let's skip ahead a few turns to follow our journey as we move to crush Ahunan and absorb their tribe into ours. We are now on turn 5 and our army is ready to attack the final settlement of Ahunan. To make sure this battle goes our way, we've activated Lady Jurong's wildfire ability. Jurong's fury is the inferno given human form and each season we gain progress in our goddess of fire bar. Once maxed out, we can activate the wildfire to invigorate our followers with burning passion and gain powerful bonuses for 8 turns which vary depending on the season when it's activated. The fealty from the Yunnan tribes has unlocked the Fire Archers unit, which will help turn this assault in our favor. The tribes of the Nan Man rely on the jungles rather than the fortresses utilized by the Han, giving them powerful bonuses when fighting in forested areas. 
This settlement is out in the open, and while it does sport defensive towers, our archers will be able to burn them down. That battle did not go as well as I had hoped, and waiting to replenish our forces will for sure deplete our Goddess of Fire. When it runs out, we will suffer penalties, so extinguishing it early will hopefully allow us to ride them out before we go into battle again. While we're waiting, let's look at what options are available to us. To the north, Meng Wo is expanding his territory, but for now we are on good terms, so perhaps it's best not to kick that hornet's nest. To the west lies the Zhongchang tribes. They're not fond of us and would be an easy conquer, but getting over there would require a long march to the westernmost part of the map. Getting back east to the action would take quite some time. The shaman Mulu rules to the east, and he has a lot of land that should be ours. His armies would offer quite a challenge, but the reward would be great. No risk, no reward. And I mean great luck. Mulu has gone to war with Meng Huo, which emboldens him to trespass into our new lands. Let's start our assault on Mulu right here and now. We're still suffering from burnout, but an opportunity like this does not come often. Mulu's army is strong and he sports a regiment of southern elephants. If we let them connect with our infantry, they will absolutely crush us. However, the unit size is small, so we'll use our flame archers to deal morale damage from afar and our Nanman spearmen to quickly overwhelm them. Let's also add a new unit to our army. The Tiger Warriors, a melee assault unit that fights alongside their trained tigers. They will be a great counter to the Nanman warriors that make up the bulk of Mulu's forces, with the charge of their tigers knocking the shield-wielding warriors to the ground. Slingers to the ready! Fight! Prepare! Just this one battle won't be enough to strike Mulu down. If we want to take all of his land and confederate him into our own faction, we'll have to move swiftly. Meng Ho is moving in for the kill, and should he get the final strike, we'll be set back quite a way. That was close. Meng Ho's army was just about to come in for the final strike, but we managed to snag the final settlement and absorb Mulu's armies for our own. This gives us access to Mulu's war elephants and the shaman himself to help us both in and out of battles. We are now in a great position, but the fighting is far from over. We won't stop until all the Nanman tribes bow down before the goddess of fire. Come down to this, Duosi holds the fealty of the final tribes and defeating him would finally unite all under one banner. We've gathered the great chieftains who have sworn fealty to us for this final war. Let's march upon King Duosi and take what is ours.